the brand new seven star terror raid event featuring incineroar has just been announced in today's video we're going to go over some of the best builds to help you prepare for this event so you can go into it and beat it easily in your game <laughs> Later this week, kicking off on the 6th and running over that weekend until the 8th of September, we will see the 7 star Incineroar event have its debut in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It of course will return for a second time out the following weekend from the 13th till the 15th of September, giving us all two opportunities to get this 7 star Pokemon in our games. The Incineroar, like other 7 star Terror Raid Pokemon, will be a level 100. It will have either a 30 or a 35 times multiplier to its HP, so it's going to sit around that. 9,900 mark. It will have its hidden ability, which this time will be Intimidate. Every time it does enter the battlefield, which will likely only be once throughout the battle, it will activate this and drop our attacking stat on our Pokemon and all our partnering Pokemon by one stage, meaning that our physical attacks aren't going to be hitting as hard. Of course, its base typing is going to be Fire and Dark, so it will have access to both of those types of moves, but its Terra typing will be Pure Dark, so will have weaknesses to fairy and fighting and bug type attacks. And these are primarily the kinds of types of Pokemon that you're going to want to look to bring to this raid. The fighting types in particular will have a resistance to dark types as well as fairy types. So they're probably the two that you want to bring to this raid. Now looking at the stats of Incineroar, it does have a much higher attacking stat than its special attacking stats. So you will naturally assume that it will primarily be a physical type attacking Pokemon. And that's how we're looking at it going into this preparation expected attacks that it has got access to are going to be things like darkest lariat and that's a dark type attack a pretty powerful one at that base 85 power and something you're going to have to watch out for in the raids especially if you are boosting your defenses because the beauty about darkest lariat is it will ignore any stat boosts on our side of the field particularly those defensive ones and still hit for very strong damage. Flare Blitz is going to be its probably primary fire type attack, but don't be surprised if we do see a special side on that if it does run something like Sunny Day to boost those fire type attacks. Flare Blitz is going to be the physical type attacking move that we we're likely going to see, but something like Overheat could be a one time use only move that we see the Incineroar fire out. Close Combat is an option that we see, it kind of plays into the wrestling theme of the Incineroar as well gives it nice coverage with those fighting type attacks something that we have to keep an eye out for maybe if you're looking at bringing something like Terrakion to this raid you would have to be wary of that move Earthquake is something that it does get access to that ground coverage as well so things like Iron Hands if we do expect that to perform well in this raid is going to be something that we also have to watch out for Thunder Punch another coverage move given the Incineroar good coverage against water type attackers in primarily the Azumarill probably one of the ones that comes to mind straight away Thunder Punch would maybe give us a few issues, so something that we have to look out for when the raid goes live. And then some other dark type attacks that it does have access to. Things like Knock Off, which could be a little bit problematic, especially if we lose our held item in a raid because the held item is so important to us. Lash Out is a move that Incineroar does have access to and something, again, we're going to have to watch out for if it does have access to because Incineroar's stats get lowered that turn. Lash Out's power doubles and damage, turning from a base 75 attack into a base 150 dark type attack, so it can be quite potent. Snarl is something that we we'll have to watch out for as well. It is not a very powerful attacking move, but it will lower a special attack by one stage if the Incineroar does use that, meaning if you are going down the route of using a special attacker against Incineroar and Snarl's there, it is going to slow our progress down. Something that I haven't listed here is Throat Chop as well. So if you're looking at something like Pariodon going into this raid and utilizing something like Screech, if Throat Chop is used by Incineroar, you're not going to be able to use that sound-based move for at least two turns, which again slows your momentum down in that raid. Now, its setup options it has got access to are primarily all going to be based around that physical attacking stat. So things like Bulk Up, it's going to boost its attack and its defense by one stage. Sword Stance, we've seen before, boosting that attack stat by two stages every time he uses it. Sunny Day is something that Incineroar could use, using those fire type attacks, namely those Flare Blitzes, maybe Overheat or any other fire type attack that it does have access to. Taunt's a dark type, a supporting option that it does have access to, and if it does utilize it, it would prevent us from being able to set up in the raid, so something that we need to keep in mind. 
And then we've got Will-O-Wisp as well, which is something that I could see Incineroar kind of playing on quite a lot to slow down those physical attackers in this raid with that burn status condition. So Incineroar does have decent coverage. It does get acrobatics as well. Something to keep in mind that it might see, you know, would help against those fighting types if you're going to go down that route. But otherwise, I think you're looking at dog type attacks, fire type attacks, and then the outliers are going to be a combination between either the fighting ground and electric or maybe a flying type coverage move there as well. So nothing too crazy. Incinero, a very strong Pokemon though, especially with that Intimidate slowing us down from the start of the battle if you're using a physical type attacker. But there's some of the options to look at. Put together a bunch of builds though that we can have a look at now that cover a lot of the different possibilities that we'll see from the Incineroar when the raid goes live later this week. So as always, all of the builds that we do feature in today's video will be down in the description below so you can take a look at them after the video if you want to put anything together in your game yourself. We're going to start off with Galarian Zapdos. It is going to be one of the better options I think going into the Incineroar. We'll get into the reasons why. But it is a fighting and flying type Pokemon. Terra typing on this one is going to be fighting. We're going to have the Shell Bell as the held item. And of course, like all of our builds, they are level 100. They are hyper trained. So all of those IVs are set to 31. Now, the moveset that we've got on the Galarian Zapdos is going to be Rain Dance. We're going to have Bulk Up, Focus Energy, and Thunderous Kick with an EV spread of 252 EVs in HP and then 252 EVs in defense with the remaining EVs those four in the attacking stat with an adamant nature and then the ability the big important thing here is the defiant ability now for the EVs you're going to use 25 HP ups 25 iron you're going to use the remaining feathers for those two respective stats and then the remaining EVs are going to be in that attacking stat so you can use one protein or you can use four muscle feathers so that would be the EV spread and it'll be the similar sort of thing across the board we'll get into that as we get into the other Pokemon the basic idea of the Galarian Zapdos is you've got Rain Dance there it's going to weaken the power of those fire type attacks that are going to come out from the Incineroar you're going to resist the dark type attacks anyway because of your fighting type and then you don't really need to worry about that even after you terrestrialize i think the only things that you maybe want to worry about initially to start off with if the incineroar does have access to thunder punch that could be a little bit problematic but the basic idea of this is going to be try and get a couple of bulk ups off early on in the raid and get your defense boosted up by one stage and your attack and then use focus energy and then you're just going to kind of spam thunderous kick because the beauty about thunderous kick is every time you use it it lowers the defense on the target pokemon by one stage so essentially getting stronger so use this in combination with the bulk up hitting for super effective damage anyway once you terrestrialize you're going to be doing a lot of damage you've got that shell bell as the held item which is going to give you a line of recovery so you don't need to worry about that and the defiant ability is going to be useful at the start of the raid where you'll get a plus one to your attacking stat because of the intimidate on the incineral rather than having minus one like you would in most situations. So that's a Galarian Zapdos. I do think this one probably will do pretty well, especially with the Rain Dance supporting against the fire type attacks. That's probably going to be the one of the more threatening things from this raid. And the bulk up gives you the support against those kind of threatening scenarios where the Incineroar could set itself up. Next up, another physical attacking option is going to be Hariyama, and it is going to be fighting type with the fighting Terra type. Flame Orb is going to be the held item. We'll get into the reasons why in a moment. Again, level 100 and Hyper Train with the moveset of Rain Dance, Belly Drum, Focus Energy and Drain Punch. And again, the EV spread is going to be exactly the same as that Galarian Zapdos with 252 EVs in HP and defense the remaining put into attack with an adamant nature. Big important thing here is going to be that Guts ability which plays off the Flame Orb. So after turn 1, the Flame Orb will activate, you will be burnt and your Guts ability will be active. So essentially doubling the attack power of Hariyama and it gives you immunity to the burn condition as well. So if Incineroar is going to fire off those Will-O-Wisp throughout the raid, then the Flame Orb kind of gives you protection against that. The basic idea again is to set the Rain Dance up as early on as possible to weaken those fire type attacks coming out from the Incineroar. Again, you're going to have the resistance to dog type attacks because of your fighting type. You're going to use Belly Drum if you can. Uh, that's going to cut your HP in half, but it's going to boost your attack to plus six. And then relying on the Drain Punch is your main attacking option, which is going to hit the Incineroar for super effective damage. You can combine that with the Focus Energy, which is going to increase the chances of a critical hit happening. So you can do more damage. So Hariyama, I think, could be a very good option going into this raid. 
Uh, the Guts ability with that Flame Orb kind of gives you the alleviation of the burn status condition that the Incineroar does have. So that's the Hariyama. Up next is going to be its future brethren, which is Iron Hands. Uh, and I think a good one for this raid all in all. I think you would have to worry about maybe Earthquake, maybe will-o-wisp as well but other than that i think the iron hand's probably going to be quite a good option and one that you probably already have in your games that you just need to tweak for this raid terror typing going to be fighting going to be level 100 hyper train the held item here going to be the expert belt uh move set is going to be iron defense sword stance focus energy and drain punch quark drive the ability we don't have much option to change that there and again same ev spread just kind of maximizing our defensive capabilities 252 EVs in HP, 252 in defense, and the remainder in attack with an adamant nature. And the basic idea of this set is going to be getting an iron defense up turn one. If you can, you're going to be able to take those physical type attacking moves from the Incineroar a lot better. Then you can rely on the Sword Stance, get those set up, boosting your attack by two stages every time you use it. Focus Energy going to increase the critical hit chances of your attacking moves and then drain punch again going to be the main attacking option after you try slides you're going to be just pretty much spamming that for the remainder of the raid but again probably going to be a decent option nice thing about iron hands is it has a sky high defense stat anyway so it's going to be able to take those physical type attacks from the incineral like i say you probably only want to worry about earthquake but the chances of it having earthquake are pretty slim but you never know the sylvian going to be one that is Probably going to be pretty decent. We'll have to see what the Incineral kind of plays like in the raid when it goes live, but I do think a good option. Very terror typing, expert belt as a held item, level 100, and of course, hyper trained. Move set of Rain Dance, Fake Tears, Calm Mind, and Draining Kiss. The ability here doesn't really matter too much, but the EV spread again is going to be 252 EVs in special attack and then 252 EVs in defense with a modest nature and the remaining EVs put into HP. Basic idea of this move set is going to be like the others. With the Rain Dance, where it is an option getting that up turn one, it's going to weaken those fire type attacks that we just hit neutrally by, so weakening those. You're going to be resisting the dog type attacks anyway because of the fairy typing you don't have to worry about coverage moves like close combat either so much or even things like thunder punch or earthquake because they're just hitting us neutrally anyway the big idea with the sylvian is going to be trying to get those fake tears off as early as possible in the raid now this will depend on when the shield goes up on the incineral i can't imagine the incineral being one of the raids where the shield goes up very early on so you're probably going to have a little bit of an opportunity to get these fake tears off reducing the special defense on the incineral by two stages every time you use it and that in turn is going to increase the power of your draining kisses you've got calm mind as well to kind of boost your special attack special defense throughout the raid at a point where it is more preferable and that just increases the damage of the draining kiss as well which is going to give you recovery every time you hit super effective damage into the incineral and it's boosted by the expert belt item that you've got on there but the silver one could be a good option depends how the incineral kind of sets up in the raid we could change this setup maybe go for something like moonblast a more powerful option with something like the shell bell but at the moment, I feel like Slow and Steady kind of wins the race with this Sylveon. And I think it does the job against the Incineral, whatever. It kind of comes out swinging when the raid goes live. Next up is going to be Azumarill. I mean, the typing just makes sense against the Incineral. Going to be base typing of Fire and Dark. It's going to fire off both those types of attack. Azumarill is a perfect match for it. Water and Fairy. It resists the Fire type attacks. It resists the Dark type attacks. The only thing that you're going to have to watch out for, we talked about it in the preview there, was the Thunder Punch. That is going to hit us for super effective damage until we can terrestrialize. Terra Typing going to be Fairy. Shell Bell the Held Item, so we have a line of recovery. Level 100 and Hyper Trained with the moveset of Rain Dance, Belly Drum, Mud Slap, and Play Rough. Huge part is the ability that's going to double our attack stats, so just making our attacks hit a lot harder. The EV spread of 252 EVs in HP, 252 EVs in attack, and the remainder put in defense with an adamant nature. Basic idea, again, because we've got the rain dance, we're going to set that up as early on in the raid as possible. We can those fire type attacks, belly drum if we can. We're going to max out our attacking stat just to make sure that our player rough is hitting for as much damage as possible. But you could even start the raid off by going rain dance and then go for like three mud slaps. That's going to reduce the accuracy on the incineral every time you use it by one stage. So meaning that its attacks aren't going to be as accurate. It also gets you closer to being able to terrestrialize, which is going to be a big part of this raid. Once you can terrestrialize, your attacks are going to be hitting a lot harder and that player rough is going to be doing nice damage to the incineral. The belly drum gives you a nice way to just get that attack stat maxed out as soon as possible. And even if you get the intimidate at the start of the raid, 
belly drumming straight after that kind of undoes that you get put to plus six and you're going to be hitting as hard as possible next up is going to be clefable and a real favorite one of mine for a lot of reasons i think if we look at the incineral throughout this raid it has got a lot of ways it can set up become very powerful the sword stance the bulk up its attacks can become a little bit out of control if it does start to kind of lean on those a little bit more but the beauty about clefable it has the ability unaware so we'll be able to ignore any of those stat boosts that the Incineroar's got. And you're going to have a pretty easy time in the raid against it if it is leaning on those setup options quite heavily. We've got the Fairy Terror typing on the Clefable. Metronome is the Held item. You could probably go something like Expert Belt, though, if you would prefer. But I feel like there's going to be situations in the raid where you're just spamming the same move over and over and over again. So the Metronome feels like it could be a little bit more beneficial in this raid. When we look at it on paper, the moveset is going to be Rain Dance, Calm Mind, Cosmic Power and Draining Kiss. You could change Draining Kiss to Moonblast and then also change the item if you're doing that from metronome to shell bell so you do have a line of recovery in the raid the ev spread is going to be 252 evs in special attack and 252 evs in defense with the remaining evs in hp and a modest nature again the most important thing like we've touched on is that unaware ability you're going to need to have throughout this raid the basic idea is going to be again like we've seen with the other rain dance users we've had in this video Set the rain dance up, reduce the damage of those threatening fire type attacks, then calm mind up. That's going to boost your special attack, special defense by one stage every time you use it. So that's going to increase the power of your attacking options. Cosmic power is there in case you need to kind of just bolster your defenses because the defense stat is the one thing that you're going to be more vulnerable on against the incineral and the cosmic power boosts your defense and special defense by one stage. So the defense boost there, you could change that for reflect. It does then give you a little bit more support for your partnering Pokemon as well. And then Draining Kiss is going to be your main option to attack the Incineroar. The nice thing about the Unaware, like we've already mentioned, is that it will ignore any stat boosts on Incineroar's side of the field. So if it does use those Sword Stands, if it does use those Bulk Ups, you'll be ignoring those. It'll just be hitting you for the same damage every single turn. Whereas you are boosting your stats with the Calm Mind, with the Cosmic Power, and the Incineral will be subjected to those stat boosts, meaning you'll be able to do a lot more damage, especially after you two Terrastalize. I do think Clefable could be a really consistent option going into this raid. Maybe not the fastest out of the options that we've got here, but definitely something to consider if you want a stable option, especially if you do change the Cosmic Power to that Reflect give you a nice option going online when you do this as a team of course there's some of the builds that i've put together in preparation for the event going live later this week let me know what you're thinking behind beating this seven star incineral when it goes live of course we've only got the Feraligate to torterra infernip and superior left to finish off the seven star terror raid so i wonder which one will be next i'm kind of hoping that it is for alligator that and infernip are the ones i'm looking forward to most i think superior is going to be a bit of an interesting one with that contrary ability but of course we've only got four left which seems crazy to think now that we're nearly finished the entire starter set of pokemon but more importantly incineral is first on our list and what we should be concentrating on when it goes live later this week of course we will go live shortly after the raid is up and put out the best solo option for this raid so if you're struggling with it you're going to be able to have an easy time beating it and of course i'm sure it will drop those very precious herba mystica alongside it so it makes it and gives it a good reason for going in and farming it over the weekend while it is running but that's everything for today's video if you've enjoyed it please drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. Thank you for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care and bye bye.